Okay, we've been talking about the cell and we're talking about how the cell is kind of like a factory complex. And the nucleus is like the executive office building in the factory complex. And then uh, next we were talking about the factory floor. So the part of the cell that does all of the manufacturing, the creating of things from raw materials. And we were talking about the endoplasmic reticulum. We learned that there are two parts to the endoplasmic reticulum. The rough endoplasmic reticulum is covered with ribosomes, makes it look like sandpaper when you look at it through the microscope. And those ribosomes allow the rough endoplasmic reticulum to make special proteins. The smooth endoplasmic reticulum has no proteins, no, has no uh, ribosomes on it. And that's why the smooth endoplasmic reticulum does not make proteins. It builds lipids and it also handles toxins. Then I was going to show you what a ribosome looks like. A ribosome is also considered an organelle, uh, but it's an organelle that has not got any phospholipid involved in it at all. So that makes it an unusual organelle, but still considered an organelle. Ribosomes do what? Ribosomes, that this, this stuff here in light blue, it's made out of two pieces, kind of fits together like this. Ribosomes are machines that will take the instructions that the nucleus sent out and read the instructions and kind of like a robot, take those instructions and build whatever it is that the nucleus wanted it to build. So this thing that's here, this purple string of beads, that's messenger RNA. That's the message that got sent out of the nucleus um, saying, hey, we want you to build this protein. And these, this in uh, yellow and this in red, um, those are other parts of this protein being built. So the ribosome is seen in a lot of detail here, but the truth is ribosomes are minuscule. How small are they, okay? Well, we've zoomed in on this particular cell so much that these little sort of reddish, brownish dots, purpley dots, those are ribosomes. And here in this big picture of the cell, the ribosomes are usually just like little tiny dots because they are so small, but they're super important. Like if I took away all of your ribosomes at this moment, you would, you'd only live a few more minutes that you need them that badly, all right? So this here in green, it looks green to me. I don't know what they were trying to highlight it with. That's rough endoplasmic reticulum with the ribosomes around it, all right? Oh, when ribosomes build proteins, they do it by a process that's called translation. It's called translation because the ribosomes translate that little secret message into building the actual protein. All right, we're still talking about the cell as if it's a factory complex. Once we've made all of these iPhones, we've got to pack them so they can be shipped off, right? The packing and shipping department of the cell is called the Golgi body. It's also known as the Golgi apparatus. Uh, Professor Golgi named a few things about him, a, a few things um, with his own name uh, so that he would be immortalized. Uh, the Golgi body uh, is, is not, de oh, it's depicted right here. And the Golgi body is going to receive packages of stuff from the rough endoplasmic reticulum and the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. And once it's packaged together, uh, it is going to receive like a little address label and get put in boxes or whatever. And then those things that have been made will go to the right final destination. If you want to know what it looks like by the transmission electron micrograph, it looks like this. Here are all of the little packages arriving there from the rough and smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Here they are being sent off to go to the cell membrane. So the Golgi body, right? Now the mitochondria. In our, um, in our factory complex on Mars, it is going to run off of uh, gasoline-powered electrical generators. The analogy for that are these little organelles called mitochondria. Mitochondria also are made out of uh, phospholipid bilayer. They've got two different sets of phospholipid bilayer. This is outer one that's kind of smooth, and then there's this inner, inner one that's really complicated. 
It's kind of like if you took a big uh, trash bag and wrapped it up and put it inside of a Ziploc bag, that's your basic structure of a mitochondria. And the mitochondria, these power generators, we don't feed them gasoline, uh, but we do feed them um, molecules like monosaccharides. And when we feed them, they will say, thank you very much. They use some of that energy for themselves. And then they make something called ATP for all of our cells to use. Let me use a pen. Um, Oh, here it is, ATP. They make ATP. ATP for our cells is kind of like electricity. Uh, what can electricity do? Well, with electricity, you can heat your house and you can run the air conditioner. You can refrigerate your food or you could microwave your food, right? You can blow dry your hair and watch the television. So with electricity, you can do almost everything. This form of energy, ATP, is what the cell uses to do all of the things the cell needs to get done so it can stay alive and can grow, right? So uh, this, um, what the mitochondria does is technically known as cellular respiration. When you hear respiration, you probably think of breathing, and breathing is also known as respiration. But cellular respiration is actually just a set of biochemical um, reactions that all together start with oxygen and uh, usually carbohydrate and end up making this magical molecule ATP, all right? Now, this is um, this cartoon picture of the mitochondria I showed you. Now let's look at these three images across the bottom. The one on the far left, that's an entire cell. It's done with scanning, sorry, transmission electron micrograph, but it's, those are usually black and white images. This one's been colorized. So you can see this is a whole cell, kind of pink. Those bright uh, turquoise dots, those are ribosomes. And these orange things, those are mitochondria. And this is going to be uh, the nucleus um, with the nucleolus inside of it. Here we zoom in closer. So all you can see is the nucleus with some of the mitochondria around it. And again, we see uh, the ribosomes. And then if you zoom in even more, now we see just one mitochondrion. You can see mitochondria are all different shapes and sizes. A weird thing about the mitochondria, these guys, um, they are not actually very closely related to humans, even though they're inside of all of our cells. These guys, the mitochondria, they are descendants of ancient bacteria. So there was an ancient cell, probably of a different lineage called an archaea, and it swallowed up some of these, um, these bacteria. And instead of killing them and eating them, it decided to just keep them kind of like farm animals. So just like a farmer will feed hay to a cow and then the cow makes milk, these mitochondria, our cells feed them glucose and oxygen and they give us ATP. So it's weird that they're, they're not very closely related to humans, even though they're inside of all of our cells. Now we have got the lysosomes and they're like the janitorial department. In our factory complex, we're busy feeding people and at the end of a meal, there's all kinds of junk left behind. When we're building products, we use a lot of the materials, but there's a lot of junk left behind. Someone's got to get rid of it. Who gets rid of it? The lysosomes do, okay? Now again, they are delineated by membrane and they are packages of very powerful destructive proteins known as enzymes, digestive enzymes. You've got a whole lab on enzymes. You will learn that enzymes are proteins that can grab two things and put them together to make a bigger thing, or like the ones in these lysosomes, they can take big things and rip them apart, right? So the lysosomes will take the leftovers from lunch and compost them so that some of it can be reused and the rest of it can be disposed of um, so those are our lysosomes. That's another organelle. 
The last, I think this is one of, no, not the last organelle. Another important organelle are the cytoskeleton. Remember me telling you that the inside of a cell is not a bag of salt water at all. It is a super complicated futuristic Tokyo. Well, what is actually forming all of the framework and the walkways and the conveyor belts and the railroad tracks is going to be cytoskeleton. Cytoskeleton is made out of protein, special proteins. You can see them in these pictures. Here is this bright uh, fluorescent yellow. That is one picture of cytoskeleton. Here it is, this very vivid red. That's more cytoskeleton. Cytoskeleton gives the framework for a cell. We're gonna talk about how some cells are tall and thin and some are fat and wide and some can move like an amoeba. Why are they any of that? Because of the cytoskeleton inside of them. Now, cytoskeleton's made out of proteins, not my favorite proteins, not super exciting proteins, but still, this, this picture we've taken here of cytoskeleton, if we took a picture just a second later, some of this cytoskeleton would have dismantled itself and others would have built itself. Imagine if you could walk out the side of a 10-story building and as you just walked out onto the air, the, there would be a road, a walkway that would build itself in front of you and dismantle itself as you left. I told you, futuristic Tokyo, right? That is the way the cytoskeleton inside of cells is. So proteins, even when they're less dramatic than enzymes, they still do some really remarkable things. They give the cell shape. They allow it to organize itself. They allow other proteins to walk along it, dragging big balloons filled with stuff from one part of the cell to another. So all of that. These are our last organelles, the flagella and the cilia. Flagella is easy. The only human cell that has a flagella is a man's sperm. That's the only one, okay? Sperm have got this really long, rather complicated swimming tail called a flagellum, right? Flagella is plural. And then there are cilia. Lots of cells in the human body have cilia. Your entire respiratory tree is lined with cells like this that have got this layer of cilia on the surface. And that layer of cilia, it actually looks like that. And it is busy taking a layer of fluid called mucus from deep in your lungs and like little fingers, moving that layer of mucus from deep in your lungs all the way up to your throat so that the next time you swallow, boom, down that mucus goes into your stomach. Those cilia are crucial for protecting your lungs against pneumonia. And just the last thing, maybe it goes without saying, but there are no cells that look like this picture that's in your textbook. This is a picture that shows a cell that's got a flagellum and it's got cilia and it's got microvilli and it's got a, no, okay? I've told you all of these organelles, but there's no, there's no individual cell of the human body that contains all of these organelles. It's just these are the different things that our cells have to choose from, and they only use the ones that they need so that they can get their own job done. All right? Okay, we'll start on a new topic at the next video.